Today on Trucks, it's the installation of a supercharger on a 98 S10. We'll blow your mind by squeezing V8 horsepower out of a 4.3 V6. After that, we'll take you for a ride with off-road legend Walker Evans and the Championship Off-Road Racing Series before heading back to the shop to help you out with some vintage upgrades. That's all today on Trucks. Welcome to another week of Trucks, everybody. We're glad you decided to hook up with us. This week, we're going to show you how to take a V6 and produce some serious horsepower by bolting on a Vortex supercharger. But before we do, let's find out what kind of numbers our SS is putting out bone stock. Go ahead and hammer it, Stace. As you can see, our dyno is showing about 144 horse at the rear wheels. Not bad for stock. Now we can do a whole lot better than that. Now keep in mind, an engine is nothing more than a fancy air pump. The better you can make it at sucking air and fuel in and blowing exhaust out, the more horsepower you're going to have. Now a supercharger, it literally rams air down the throat of the engine, making some serious power. Now this kit we got from Vortec comes with, of course, their blower, all the brackets you're going to need, as well as upgrades for the ignition and the fuel system. We went ahead and removed the hood for easier access, and the first thing you need to do is disconnect your battery, then you can pull off the belt, as well as the tensioner arm from the alternator bracket. After that, you can remove the alternator and the bracket. Now, to make room for the blower, the stock position of the alternator has got to be changed. Now, I've gone ahead and drained the radiator because this lower hose has got to be modified later on. Now, the supercharger gets its lubrication from the engine oil, which means we have to drill a hole in the oil pan for an oil return line. When you do this, make sure you go slow to try to keep the least amount of shavings from falling into the pan as possible. Well, now that Sis has made me a little nervous drilling a hole in our oil pan, I need to remove the throttle body resonator and all its hardware. Now you can go ahead and toss all this stuff because the kit uses a totally different setup. You will, however, have to reuse the air filter box. Now we're not done down here yet. We still need to tap the hole for the fitting. Now a neat trick is to take some grease and pack the flutes of the tap. This allows you to catch the metal chips that you're cutting out. After that's done, silicone the threads on the brass fitting and screw it in. Now like Stace said earlier, we do need to relocate the alternator, which means we had to extend the wire by about 12 inches. You also need to bend the transmission lines as far down as possible so you can get the new mounting bracket in place. After that, put in the alternator and tighten it down. Now that we have our oil drain taken care of, we need to run an oil feed line from a filtered source. I'm going to go from this spot right here above the oil filter using these supplied elbows. Now you'll notice I'm not using any kind of Teflon tape or sealant on these threads. That's because you don't want to take the chance of anything clogging these lines because you could burn up your supercharger. Now we can connect the feed line and run it to the front of the engine. Now before we can get the blower in place, I had to attach this drain hose. Now I can run it down behind the backing plate to Stacy. You got it, man? Yeah, I got it. All right. Now we can put the blower in place. This oil drain hose goes to the fitting that we put in the oil pan earlier. Now the only thing to keep in mind here is it needs to flow downhill, and of course there shouldn't be any kinks or bends in it. Because of where the intake box sits, you will have to move the coil. Now you can reuse the stock coil, but Vortec does supply a brand new mounting bracket. With the coil in place, you can go ahead and bolt on the plenum box. Finally, we can attach the discharge tube from the supercharger to the box using the supplied elbow sleeves and clamps. With this style supercharger, you need to run a bypass valve. Here's a scenario for you. 
running down the track about 5,000 RPM, air's blowing in, air's blowing out, everything's fine. The problem comes when you lift off the gas and the throttle plates close. Now, your motor is still spinning at 5,000 RPM, which means your supercharger is spinning about 40,000. This can cause surge and that will destroy a supercharger. The bypass valve vents the pressure from the plenum right back into the inlet and that takes care of the problem. Now this valve runs off manifold vacuum and we're going to take that right from the power brake booster. Now that we have the air inlet tube in place, we're just about done up here, aren't we, Stace? Yeah, we are. And this tube sits on a bracket that's mounted on the manifold. It's held in place by one of these clamps. We're about halfway through Project Supercharger, so it's time to take a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This thing is really going to hum, man. Oh, it's looking good. <laughs> Later in the show, we'll go for a ride on the wild side with off-road legend Walker Evans and the championship off-road racing series. But up first, we need to finish Project Supercharger so we can put it on the dyno and show you the numbers. Can't get enough of trucks? Check us out online at truckstv.com. Welcome back to the shop. Now, if you're just joining us, we're right in the middle of putting a Vortex supercharger on a 4.3 V6. That way, we'll have V8 performance and a truck we can drive every day. Now, obviously, we're going to have to do some modifications to this air box so it'll work with the supercharger. So I'm going to get started taking off this mass airflow sensor and the air box assembly. You know, there's more to a supercharger than just bolting it on. That's why Vortec included this completely upgraded ignition control box that's going to help eliminate detonation or pinging. Now, we're going to mount ours right into the center console so we can run the wires through the floor. I had to relocate this temperature sensor into the air box lid, and the kit also comes with a high-performance air filter. Now I can run these wires from the coil and this vacuum hose from the manifold down under the truck into the cab to mill. Before Stace can feed those wires to me, I need to drill a hole through the floorboard. Now it's always a good idea when drilling through carpet to take a razor blade and cut a hole out. That way the drill bit doesn't snag the fabric. All right, Stace, feed those wires up. Got it, man. With the center console in place, you can go ahead and hook up your electrical. Now, don't worry, you don't have to be an electrician. The manual's very straightforward. Now, Vortec also suggests you mount the retard knob in the front of the console for easy access and a nice, clean look. Once we were done with the interior, we were able to get the truck back up on the lift to take care of some of these fuel upgrades. Now the kit comes with a fuel management unit, which is a fancy name for a pressure regulator, and it splices in line to the fuel return line, which runs from the engine back to the gas tank. Now remember this vacuum hose we ran from the brake booster? It makes a stop right here. The kit also comes with an auxiliary fuel pump and harness so you don't have any flow problems when you're stomping on the gas. Now it runs right in line with the main fuel line and the relay for it I've mounted back here on the frame rail but you can put that anywhere you want. We're going to get our power for the ignition box and the fuel pump Stace was just hooking up directly from the battery using this inline fuse which is really awesome because it saves you the hassle of having to splice into your fuse box. Ah, it's about time to put fire to this thing, but before we can do that, you need to refill the radiator, change the oil, put in fresh spark plugs, and it's easy to forget some of these fittings, so make sure you double check everything. Stace, I'd say it's about time to find out what kind of horsepower we picked up with this baby. <laughs> That's what I've been waiting for.
All right, 203 horse at the rear wheels. That's nearly 60 horse we picked up. This project was definitely worth it. That's yeah. just with a supercharger. Think yeah. if we put on a performance exhaust yeah. and better shift and tranny and big tires and change whoa, the gears whoa, whoa, whoa. in the rear. Hold on, man. We need to take a break. Go look no, at the I'm number. Check the number. <laughs> Don't go away. We got more trucks to roll at you right after this. This is great. It's awesome, man. Up next on Trucks, we'll buckle up for a ride with off-road legend Walker Evans and the Championship Off-Road Racing Series. Then we'll head back to the shop for some tips on vintage upgrades. For more information about trucks, check us out online at truckstv.com. become known as the nation's premier off-road racing series. And who's going to argue? Where else can you see full-size trucks packing 800 horsepower racing side-by-side, nose-to-tail, getting major air? This is excellent, excellent racing. If you've never been, you have to come out to a core race. Core puts on the greatest races out here, the most exciting races you'll ever see. You know, This aspect of racing, I feel, has all different kinds of realm of racing. You've got drag racing, which is a starting line right off the start. It's a drag race to the first corner. You get to the first corner, then you're sideways just like sprint car racing with a truck right next to you. Then after that first corner, of course, the core's going to throw in some jumps and bumps. So that's always upsetting the trucks and the chassis and other vehicles, so there's always excitement no matter where you're looking at on the track. The most recognizable name to ever compete in the championship off-road racing series is the legendary Walker Evans, whose benchmark off-road career got started some 30 years ago after stumbling into a shop owned by actor James Garner in Southern California. I had a neighbor that invited me to go out to Hemet to look at a bunch of vehicles that they were putting together jumped in a pickup, drove out there, and wow, when I walked through the door, there was 10 vehicles all lined up. They were cutting the fender wells open on them, putting on big shocks and tires, and I said, wow, I gotta be a part of this. By, quote, being a part of this, Walker helped himself to Victory Lane 140 times in his desert, stadium, and sprint track off-road racing career. But when it's all said and done, it'll be the way he helped out his fellow competitors along the way that'll earn him the crown as the ultimate champion of his sport. I see a young guy that's coming up, looks like he's got some talent, and his vehicle is just purely not handling good, whether it be the shocks, wrong springs, or tires, or whatever. I'm the first one to give him a little advice, and uh, if he takes it, so much the better. He's touched probably two-thirds to three-quarters of the people here. He's had them actually work for him. Mechanics, engine builders, drivers. Um, it's amazing what Walker Evans' organization has done. I want to do the same thing Walker did for me, you know. If anybody wants to come in here and I can show them and help them get in, in off-road racing, I'd be more than happy to because that's what Walker Evans did for me. Even though Walker did decide 1999 would be his final season as a full-time driver, don't think for a second the 60-year-old vet was looking to rest on past glory in his final campaign. I want to win the championship on the way out the door. True to his legend, Walker finished off his final season by winning the core championship in 99, just one of his 20 titles in a storied off-road career. And while it's true, 20 crowns and 30 seasons of racing is a staggering achievement, his true legend reaches far beyond his racing exploits. Without question, Walker's greatest legacy is the legendary heart he's instilled in son Evan, who lost the use of his legs in a motorcycle accident 10 years ago. When I was laying there paralyzed, I told myself, I'm not going to let my legs not working stop me from racing. This is the love of my life. I've been around it my whole life watching my father race, and I wasn't going to not race just because my legs didn't work. When he was laying on the operating table, just before they went in to open his back all up, he said, I will be back. And I said, I know you will. I know you will. I had no idea that he had the confidence, the desire, the burning desire that I just talked about, he possessed way more than, than me. Look where he's at. He builds his own cars, hand controls, goes out there and wins races. A paraplegic bouncing through that kind of stuff. Phenomenal. 
I just want to keep that Evans name and tradition going, and I just want to make him as proud as he's made me over the years. When it's all said and done, you come in for the last time and turn her off, and she goes cold. What do you want people to say about Walker Evans? Well, I'd like him to think that he was probably one of the greatest off-road drivers. Every time he got in a vehicle, he drove it like he wanted to win. I mean, uh, I don't lollygag around. I go for the gusto. I want the thing up front or I want to know why. I want him to say he put on as great a show as he possibly could. And above all, I want him to say he was a man. He was a great man for the sport. There's no doubt what Walker Evans wants him to say is exactly what they do. If you want more trucks, check us out online at truckstv.com. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. Now, we know there's a lot of you guys out there that like to customize your classic trucks, but there's also a big crowd that likes to keep them original, like this old 48 F1. Unfortunately, if you are a stickler for keeping your truck original, there are a few problems you're going to have to deal with, like overheating and not being able to run down the interstate at speed, and even if you could, the handling would be <laughs> marginal at best. So we're going to show you some smart upgrades that won't detract from the originality of your pickup, but that will allow you to use it for more than just the parade circuit. Let's go ahead and get started with the motor. As you can see, this thing's running a six volt system, which will work, but the old wires tend to get real brittle and can cause fires. So if in doubt, replace the wires and a 12 volt system is always better. Now, a major area of concern on these old trucks are the brakes. Now, of course, you can go out and drop a ton of money and get a fancy disc brake set up, but the reality is these old drum brakes will work just fine if they're in good shape. Now, this means good drums, new shoes, slave and master cylinders that don't leak, and don't forget your brake hoses because they can swell shut when they get old. We talked about overheating earlier, and you won't have any problems with this flathead as long as you use new belts, hoses, flush the radiator, and you may want to add an auxiliary electric fan for when you're idling in traffic. Now everybody that's ever driven one of these old boys knows that they wander all over the road. Now you can take care of this problem by making sure that your tie rod ends, your kingpin bushings, and your steering box are either new or rebuilt. But the biggest difference you can make is running radial tires as opposed to the old bias ply stalkers. Don't forget a good set of gas shocks as well. Remember, you don't have to spend a ton of cash to get your classic out of the driveway and onto the highway. The band style oil filter wrench is one tool that you'll find in just about every toolbox. The problem is they lose their grip when they get old. Heck, even when they're new, and there's a little bit of oil on the filter, you can still have a problem. So to keep yourself from slipping all over the place and resorting to sticking a screwdriver through the filter to twist it off, take a piece of sandpaper and fold it over the band. Now you have enough grip to get the job done. I want you to hold up your right hand like this. You see these fingernails? This is a how-to guy. He actually works on his own stuff. He actually sweeps his own shop. I've often said that uh, I'm probably a better mechanic than I'm a driver. I just couldn't find anybody to drive it, so I had to do that too. <laughs> And now truck gear, parts, tools, and equipment for pickups and sport utilities. Everybody knows the more performance your motor's kicking out, the hotter it's going to run. This black magic electric fan from Flexalite will not only keep things cooler, but will also free up some horsepower by replacing your belt driven fan. It also has an adjustable thermostat so the fan automatically kicks on when the motor needs it most. The durable shroud means you can put it through the paces off road as well. Keep things cool with a Flexalite for under $200. A few years ago, the Eastwood Company came out with the hot coat system. Now, this allowed you to powder coat in your own garage. The only drawback was that you had to have an oven to cure the parts. Well, now Eastwood has come out with this infrared light to cure the parts. This allows you to do a much bigger piece than you could ever get in mom's oven. 
do your own powder coating for about 650 bucks. That's going to do it for truck gear. Here's a look at next week's show. We'll install heavy-duty all-purpose bumpers front and rear on Project Sinister Silverado. Then we'll show you an awesome 55 Blue Oval that would make Henry Ford himself proud. After that, we'll show you how to waterproof a Wrangler so you can make deep water crossings a part of your off-road experience. That's all next week on Trucks. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Yeah, we look forward to trucking with you again next week. is an RTM production.